Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. In this uh, group of lecture on uh, heart failure, I'm going to cover all those uh, diseases cause heart failure in different lecture. In this one, I try to uh, explain a new uh, classification of heart failure since 2020 has been uh, published and a general concept of the heart failure. As you know, heart failure is when a cardiac output is not equal and adequate uh, for the demanding of the blood uh, by the body. So, an equal supply and demand. And since the significant and predominant uh, clinical uh, feature and presentation in most, uh, almost most cases is retention, fluid retention in lung or systemic, uh, that we call it congestion. So uh, many, uh, many people, they use it interchangeable heart failure as a congestive heart failure. But as you can see later, the congestive heart failure are, uh, is not al always as a heart failure different. They are going to two different categories. Heart failure can be uh, due to the following situation. We have systolic uh, dysfunction. Heart cannot pump enough. And at top of that, you know, is coronary artery disease, uh, ischemia and infarction, myocardial infarction that cause 65% of the systolic dysfunction. Another is diastolic dysfunction. Our ejection fraction and systolic function contraction of the myocardium is not uh, too much significant bad, but the relaxation and feeling, the diastolic feeling of the left ventricle has some problem that we call the diastolic dysfunction. And top of them, you know, is, for example, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or infiltrative disease. Next group that cause, uh, can cause heart failure or valvular uh, disease. Uh, top of them is severe MR, MS, AS. In all those cases, at least at the early stage, uh, at the severe level but early stage, still can be myocardial, systolic, diastolic, almost close to the normal, but uh, since forward output uh, is uh, defect, so we have symptom and sign of the heart failure. The next one ha is right heart failure that has a specific and uh, unique uh, clinical feature, feature and causes. It goes to another, I'm going to explain in another lecture. And the next one is cardiomyopathy due to arrhythmia as you can uh, know, uh, we have this type of the uh, cardiomyopathy later, we talk about that. And the last one are those situations that cardiac output is high, but still we have heart failure. At top of them, severe anemia, atriovenous malformation, and endocrine disease, tridotoxicosis, and so on. The new classification that has been published by the group of the International uh, Cardiac uh, Societies on the uh, committee in the 2020, they changed uh, some of those classification and criteria uh, on the classification of the heart failure that has been done by American, European, and Japanese soci cardiac societies. In this uh, classification, uh, especially on, based on the EF, instead of the two group that uh, before was uh, heart failure with reduced EF and heart failure with the preserved EF, it, uh, they divided uh, to the four group instead of the two group. The first group that we have uh, preserved or systolic dysfunction, HFPEF, Still, the criteria is EF when is over 50%. In the between 50 to 40, 
that goes to this category is heart failure with mildly reduced ejection fraction. Most of these patients are asymptomatic. So it goes to this category and the third group are those heart failure that uh, significantly ejection fraction reduced below uh, 40% EF. So it goes to that category of the uh, HF uh, reduced EF systolic. So criteria goes in this group less than 40%. And finally, the other group they add on is heart failure with improved EF. So keep in your mind a new uh, classification of the uh, heart failure. In this definition of the heart failure defined by the symptom of the congestive or pulmonary uh, systemic or pulmonary edema, shortness of breath, exertional, nocturnal dyspnea, and so on, edema, and or with elevated uh, cardiac uh, marker that uh, in those congestion it goes high and top of them are brain natriuretic peptide or BNP. Echocardiography is the first line and the most important tool for diagnosis, classification, evaluation, and follow up uh, for the heart failure, especially with new technology, uh, 3D strain echo and intracardiac flow mapping. It gives us wonderful and the best information for this purpose. The first step in evaluation of, of the left ventricular systolic function is uh, measuring ejection fraction. That is the easiest and more reliable uh, parameter for evaluation of the myocardial contraction and systolic function. And we can do by 2D and uh, or 3D or strain echo. Recently they add on in uh, those uh, modality. With EF, normal EF by Simpson or DISC method uh, any of them is EF is equal or more than 53% in uh, male and uh, equal or more than 55% in female. Beside of the EF uh, that we can use by Simpson or 2D, there are other indirect uh, parameters that we can uh, evaluate ejection fraction too. Among them, uh, three more reliable parameters are MAPSI or mitral annulus plane systolic excursion and MAPSV, mitral annulus peak systolic velocity by TDI tissue doppler. And finally, global longitudinal strain that we do by uh, strain, speckel uh, tracking strain echocardiography. In this uh, group, if the mean uh, MAPC means we are going to do a mode on apical four chamber on the medial annulus and lateral annulus, and we then we measure mean, or both of them mean, if it's equal or more than 10 millimeter mean, it's, uh, or MAPS V that we do tissue Doppler and uh, do S prime at the medial annulus here and down the tissue Doppler, this one S prime, if it's equal more than 10 centimeter per second, or global longitudinal strain that in the speckle tracking uh, echocardiography we do is equal or more than minus 20 percent, means minus 20, minus 21, 22, usually is about minus 22. That in those, uh, if we have those all three criteria, almost always ejection fraction will be normal. In the, when we have systolic dysfunction, ejection fraction goes to less than 50%. That as I mentioned there, between 40 to 49, it goes to the mild category. In these cases, if uh, we have uh, th those, uh, we can use those other parameter for evaluation ejection fraction indirectly. That in that co that those cases will be 
mean maps three equal or less than five seven millimeter and maps v or tissue doppler s prime on media annulus equal or less than seven centimeter per second or global longitudinal strain less or equal or less than minus 18 uh, percent as you know map c on the medial annulus usually is will be less than map c on the lateral annulus and as you can see here we have a gap between those two between the ef 50 and 53 percent that is still uh, we have uh, not a concerns on uh, what about those group of the patient they goes to which category since uh, the hemodynamic changes inside of the heart and those parameter in evaluation of the heart function is very important and they have many uh, role in understanding all those uh, disease and mechanism of the disease in this lecture i am going to just explain a little of hemodynamic changes during the cardiac cycle as you know we have two type of cardiac cycle uh, electrical cardiac cycle that start with the p and up to the next cycle uh, but uh, mechanical uh, heart cycle is when the uh, ventricle start contraction so there is a little gap uh, difference between very when we call cardiac cycle means mechanical cycle in the mechanical cycle that start with the left ventricular contraction and almost equal or present at the r way on the qrs complex here at this level that is at the end of the diastole pressure between the left atrium and uh, left ventricle almost equal with the starting contraction pressure on the left ventricle goes high and push and close the uh, mitral or atrioventricular valve tra mitral valve and tricuspid valve on the right side mitral valve in the left side so at this moment mitral valve at the beginning of the contraction of left ventricle or right ventricle atrioventricular valve closed but uh, aortic valve still is closed because uh, blood pressure at the aorta that is equal diastolic blood pressure push and keep the aortic valve and pulmonary valve on the diastolic pressure on the pulmonary system uh, pulmonary circulation keep the uh, valve closed until pressure goes to sub level that get over the diastolic blood pressure in that case start uh, aortic valve open and blood goes to the aorta from this time that aortic uh, atrioventricular valve closed at this level and until uh, aortic valve or pulmonary valve both of them doesn't matter just different level uh, still is uh, closed this time both all valve are closed or in another word both valve in valves in each side so all four valves are closed this period of time we called it isovolumetric contraction time because in this uh, period of the time no blood goes out or in just the left ventricle or right ventricle contraction the shape of the left ventricle change pressure increase but the volume doesn't change because no, nothing go out so we called it isovolumetric means equal or same volume and contraction time because it happened during contraction after opening uh, aortic valve blood start goes up to the end of the uh, peak of the systolic goes to the maximum at end of the systole when contraction finished at this level the, uh, and the relaxation or contraction finished and repolarization start the pressure on the aorta and the left ventricle start dropping when the pressure on the left ventricle drop below the diastolic pressure valve aortic valve one more time again closed at this level until the blood pressure on the left ventricle uh, decreased to the level of the left atrium again those all those valve 
still become closed again. So in this time, that all valve is closed, pressure on the left ventricle starts dropping, but the volume doesn't change. We call it isovolumetric relaxation time because during relaxation, the left ventricle volume doesn't change, just pressure start dropping. So we call it isovolumetric relaxation time. The between those two, I, IVCT and IVRT, this time here, duration, that blood goes outside, we call it ejection time here. And after blood pressure drop, uh, in, in, intracardiac or intraventricular pressure drop below the left atrial pressure at this moment, then mitral valve open and blood goes to the left ventricle and diastolic start from this moment. That it start with the rapid feeling, as you can see here, rapid feeling. Uh, it goes to the diastasis at, after the, before the P and after at this level. Then uh, finally, after contraction of the atrium, after P wave, pressure again one more time goes high and 30% of the, uh, 30 percent of the blood that goes to the left ventricle during diastole happen at this moment. And finally, the diastole finished and the cycle start again. For uh, review other topics related to these uh, topics, you can go and check this uh, clip or this clip or this one or this and over 150 other lecture. Just go to the playlist and uh, find the topics you need it. Up to the next time. Have a wonderful time.